heart that hurts I want to spend my life Mending broken people I want to spend Welcome again to 3ABN Today. My name is Shelley Quinn, and we are so glad that you have joined us today, as you do so many days of the week. And we want to take this opportunity always. It's always in our heart, and sometimes we forget to say it, but I just want to thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts for your prayers and your love and your financial support of 3ABN. This is God's ministry. We're very privileged to have the opportunity to work here, but we couldn't do what we do without you. We're partners in this, so thank you so much. We have some special people with us today, and they're lovely people. They're not strangers to our 3ABN audience, but we hope you will stay tuned. If you're not familiar with NAPS, we hope you will stay tuned so that you can get to know them and see how God uses people when, when your heart is submitted and committed to the Lord. Mm. God will use you in mighty ways. Before I introduce them, let me read this text to you because it is applicable. This is, this is kind of the motto, I would say, of NAPS. And I'm going to read from Isaiah 58. I'll begin with verse 8. It says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will answer, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. The, those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Let me now introduce our special guest, and we'll begin with Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul, we're so glad that Anthony Paul, you are PhD. What is your PhD? In biology. In biology. Yes, that sir. was my major. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how we think we have a plan and God just keeps taking us <laughs> elsewhere? So you are the president and founder of NAPS. Yes. What does NAPS stand for? NAPS, the acronym represents the National Association for the Prevention of Starvation. And that? And we have been in existence now for uh, 39 years. Next year, going to be our 40th anniversary. Praise yes. the yes. Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Well, we're, we're going to be excited to hear what you're doing now. Yes. Then we have with us John Paul Carpenter, mm -hmm. his wife Carly Carpenter, and last but not least of the Carpenters is John Michael Carpenter. And we're so glad that you're here. John, what do you do with NAPS? Well, now we are, we're working with the over in Mississippi right now on the uh, new clinic in Knoxville Prater. Okay. And we work at the clinic and... Uh, and are you a native Mississippian? No, ma'am. I'm no? way from Jackson, Alabama. Alabama. You and Molly Sue ought to get together. That, that <laughs> accent. <laughs> I'll be speaking just like that before the end of the program. Let me see. And Carly, what do you do? I do the um, housekeeping for the wellness center in Sawyerville. And um, I help out in the kitchen quite a bit. And uh, we do a health in the home where we go and do Bible studies and help with lifestyle changes for people oh, that wonderful. request. Yeah, it's really a, been a blessing for me to help with that. Wonderful, wonderful. And John Michael, 
You are a student where? In Nala. In where? In Nala. In Nala. I like the way you say that. So that is the Abundant Life Academy? Is that Naps what? Naps Abundant Life Academy. Okay. Well, we are so glad that you're with us. And then we have behind us Dr. Mike, uh, Dr. Michael. Mm -hmm. Dr. Marlo. Marlo. I'll, I'll get there, <laughs> Marlo. Okay. Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> and Dr. Marlo Paul. Yes, ma'am. And what is the connection between you and Dr. Anthony Paul? This is my husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yes. you are a medical doctor, though, yes. right? What is your specialty? Internal medicine. Internal medicine. Yes. Well, and what do you do with NAPS? I'm the medical director of NAPS. Wonderful. It yes. Is, it is so <laughs> good to have a husband and wife. You know, that's when husband and wife team together to work for the Lord. It is such a blessing, isn't it? I, I'm sure you all know. And that's something that JD and I have done for many years together and love it. Now, Laura, I didn't ask you, do you pronounce your name Harkin or Jarkin? Jarkin. 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 And you do what with NAPS? Well, I'm one of the nurses in the clinic. I'm right now studying in Judson College. Um, I'm still I'm ending my my semester with nursing, so I was blessed by going and joining the missions, and as well as going to school. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's come back to Dr. Anthony yes. Paul. Yes. Tell us how NAPS began and what is the mission. That's yes. a very good question, Shelley. So NAPS began when I was in school as a student back in 1977. And as I mentioned, next year will be our 40th anniversary. As a student, we used to go around um, helping people, feeding the homeless under the bridge. And then we expanded to the community work. Then we went uh, um, out of state and started doing work. And then in 1996, we went to the international. And so what we do, we work with kids in the community, teaching them about the love of God, good moral values, uh, about education, good education, and of course, the health. And also we work in the juvenile detention homes. We, uh, for, in a foreign land, we train young people to be disciples of God. And so we have now about 60 different branches around the world. We are in 30 different countries. Praise and, God. And over the last, uh, I say 15, 20 years, we have been able to, not NAPS itself, but the, the groups have been able to baptize over 25,000. 25,000, 25, yes. Amen. And they have gone out to places that we could not have gone. Presently, what we're doing, we're working uh, in the South, uh, Alabama, Mississippi area, trying to follow uh, the guidance of Ellen G. White about the Southern work. And we have established clinics and we're building a new one right now. And the doctor, Dr. Malo, will give us some more information on what we encountered as we started working this Southern work, which we started about five years ago. Okay. Yes. Um, well, un unfortunately, the medical care is uh, not too well established in the southern parts, most southern parts of Alabama and Mississippi. And it was brought to our attention when we would go down south and do free um, clinics and health fairs. And we were realizing that we were serving um, mostly poor people who didn't have access to health care or they didn't know how to get access to health care. So we encountered a lot of situations where there was like a 30 year old with breast cancer who's dying or we hear stories when we do their family health history uh, where their father died in four, at age 40 of a massive heart attack or a stroke and we're encountering, encountering like nine, 10 year olds with type 2 diabetes and mm -hmm. hypertension and so it was very tragic and once we started teaching uh, the community and having health lectures, we realized, man, they want to know how to live right. And so, um, but nobody's really showing them how. And so that was a mandate that we felt convicted of that we need to go mm -hmm. and not just provide medical care, but also education to be able to help them to learn so that they can pass it on, teach them how to cook healthy and it, the food can still 
tastes good. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a blessing because God has used that in a mighty way as an opening wedge to their hearts spiritually, which is the main reason. But you know, you can't go in and just say, let's have a Bible study. You have to meet the needs like Jesus did. And so it's been awesome being able to uh, work for him in that aspect. Amen. And, amen. and the situation is very desperate in that mm -hmm. area. They are so happy, <clears throat> excuse me, to, um, to see people come there and minister to their needs, especially in the medical area. There's a clip we have of an old lady lives in a place called um, Freedom Village, Mississippi, which is, you heard about the 40 acres and the mule. Well, this is an authentic area where the slaves had gotten their 40 acres and they still live in that area. Oh, wow. And we're able to go in there. They hadn't seen the doctors in years and years. And so this video that's about to come up will show you. I think Dr. Marlow was with that group. Mm -hmm. went in there and started ministering, and they were just so surprised that someone will take time off mm -hmm. to come and minister to them. Praise mm -hmm. And it, it, it's very difficult working in this area where there's not in a lot of, um, we say, I don't want to say ignorance, but lack of information. Lack of okay. knowledge. People don't understand why they are ill. Uh, Part of it's probably that good old Southern cooking. <laughs> Being a good old yes. Southern cook myself. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they don't blame the food. Yeah, they, they'll blame everything else. And uh, when you try to diagnose them, they will say. Yes, the common response we get is, I don't claim that. I don't claim that. Mm -hmm. And so we give an analogy and we say, well, when your gas tank is on empty, do you say, I don't claim it and just keep driving? Or do you take it to the gas station and mm -hmm. get it, you know, get gas? And so the same is with your health. You know, don't say, the way you don't claim it is by asking God for direction and living right mm -hmm. so that it can be reversed. That's how we don't claim it, but we don't ignore it and keep living the same way. <laughs> well, let's look at that video now. Okay. Some of these people probably haven't had anyone show any real interest in them mm -hmm. in a long time, particularly from the medical community. Mm -hmm. So to go out and th that was a house call. Yes, <laughs> it was. We still do house calls. You still do yeah. house calls. Yeah. So you probably want to talk about uh, Dr. Mahler about the conditions that exist. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the conditions that exist here are, are worse than some of the third world countries we've been to really? on missions. Um, I uh, work part time at a rural clinic and hospital and uh, sometimes I have to bring my own gloves. Um, sometimes uh, I had a student work with me and we had a call in the I, ER. I'm sorry if I'm sitting here with my mouth agape, but that yes. is just amazing to it think is. why here in the United States this is. Right, it is. Delicious. And we got called to the ER once and a lady was um, having a stroke, we had to transfer her, obviously, to a higher level hospital facility, and the nurses put tape around her wrist and wrote her name and date of birth because they didn't have the necessary equipment to put a regular hospital band. And sometimes we don't even have paper for the exam tables, so we have to use different sheets, things of that sort. Our sharp container box, we don't have those sometimes. We have to use different containers, and it's just amazing to see um, that still exist in America. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have a proper AED machine. It's very antiquated, the old fashioned. What um, is an one. AED machine? Sorry, it's a defibrillator. Okay. If someone goes into cardiac arrest, you use it to try to help revive them. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yes, it's the poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where God would have us to go to minister. And speaking of house calls, um, if you don't mind, I, I would like to transition into one house call that has been a tremendous blessing for us as a group, as an organization. Um, um, usually on Sabbath naps, we go and we bring church to the communities. And uh, we, myself and an another, a couple of other people, we would drive to a place called Boaz every Sabbath. It was about a 
hour and a half drive, would you say? Yeah. Yeah, every Sabbath, and we would go minister to the poor community there, which were mostly Latinos. And um, we were able to meet Lauda and her family. At that time, she was 10 years old. And at that time, her mother was not feeling well, which opened the door for us to come into her home and minister her mom back to health. And I would like Lauda to share the story of what <laughs> happened from do. there. <laughs> yes, um, well, when they first came, I remember they would come and do plays. They would, you know, do play, they do plays about the Bible, you know? Like, they would talk about, like, the love of God. And we were, like, over here, like, we didn't know anything about that. We, uh, my mother was raised in Catholic. So what I did, when, every time I would go to school, I was trying to get used to that, you know? I would go and praise on the statue Mary, and I would try to get that as a habit. But then when naps came, they changed my life all around. Um, they, ne they always uh, kept taking us to church, you know. They would talk about the Bible. They would, they, would, they would come from far just to come and see us. And I think that was something that, you know, I thank God a lot because I don't know where I would have been right now, you know. Me going, me kissing the statue and now knowing the Word of God, there's a lot more people out there, you know, that is just like me. Um, whenever I joined into the mission, it was really hard for me. Um, when I transferred to Sawyerville, where we're in the South, uh, I graduated out of high school. I wanted to, I mean, my dream was to go to college and be a nurse because my mom suffered a lot with medical conditions. My family did. So that was, that's what brought me into medical. I want to help people that are just like yeah. me, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I did was I went to the counselor in my school and I was, I asked, how can I join into FASO? How can I go to college? Well, she asked me, me and my friend, um, she was, she said, does your mother have Social Security? My mom is a single mom with four kids and does not have a Social Security. So I told her that no, my mom doesn't. And she's like, well, you can't, you can't go to college. Uh, well, you know, that kind of brought me down, but I was like, no, I know there has to be something that I could do. So I called Marlo. <laughs> Marlo, <laughs> she has been helping me with college and tutoring me and all my, my grades that I have now, it's all because she helped me understand mm -hmm. and that, that really impacted my life. When I, when I started, when I transferred to Judson to be doing missions and college, a lot of things came and attacked me. It was, um, one condition was probably in October. My mom had a car accident when we were gonna go to a mission trip in Meridian and I had to miss it. Um, I had to go home my brother and sisters were okay. My, the car was destroyed. Then after that, my mom lost her job. And being a single mother, it's, it's hard. Especially with four children. Yes. And well, I felt more responsible because I'm the oldest. Yes. So afterwards, um, my car was stuck up. I had problems and well they took my car and I was like and I was barely driving back home to go see my family because my mom is like a, I'm a mommy's girl so yeah. she was like I want you to come home and they took my car I was driving back home so I was able to get close home when that happened and my uncle was able to take me back home and then I didn't, I had no way to come back. I'm like, how am I gonna study? How am I gonna keep on with college? You know, that was one thing that I loved. You know, going to college and be someone, be help, help, be able to help others the way they did to me. And well, what happened was that Naps came and rescued me, <laughs> Mrs. Carly and Mrs. Stokes. They drove three hours away from where I live to come and pick me up Great. and go back to college. So I really thank God that you know, he has been opening doors for me to like go into missions. I, I do not have any problems with that with college. College, uh, 
you know, when God wants you to go somewhere, He will open doors. So for me to go into missions, there was always, you know, an open door. He's like, no worry, don't, don't, no problem. You can do the assignments later on or, you know, it, I mean, everything was working towards God and His work. And she yeah. is, she yeah. is, yeah, she is a wonderful young lady. Yeah. I can tell that. Yeah. And you know yeah. something, yeah. Laura, really, mm -hmm. when, when we make a decision to work for God, mm -hmm. You will find that if, if you're going to be effective, the devil always steps up and tries to do, tries to throw obstacles in your path. Mm -hmm. But to, if, if you keep your hand in the hand of the Lord, those obstacles just become stepping yeah, stones. Yeah. So yeah. I can tell God's going to use you in a mighty way. Mm -hmm. John, uh, John Paul, mm -hmm. not John Michael, but John Paul, <laughs> how did you all come to join NAPS? We, uh, we was drowning pretty much. We, uh, we was in the church, came into the Seventh-day Adventist church and uh, coming out of a party life, a drug life, you know, we, uh, I, I became part of the Adventist church at a, a younger age and uh, had fell out of the church. And uh, but like I said, it was out. The devil had us leading us in, in the ways of party life. and. He had his hook in your nose. Running wild, yes, running wild. But um, and um, me and my wife, we got together and married and divorced and um, and back together again. But um, and we realized that something we were saying that you know that we're missing the Lord. You know, we need the Lord in our family, and and He was calling us, and but He done had His fangs in us, you know, and it's hard to get to get away. And um, we uh. Was that we came back to Jackson, Alabama. Was living down in Foley, Foley, Alabama, and um, realized it was too fast. And just he was calling us back, getting us away from these things. And and um, we was coming out. Like I said, we was even selling drugs and just everything you can think of. You know that. Was, and this is uh, before John Michael. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, as he was coming along was when the Lord was leading us away from these things. And um, we got away from certain drugs and uh, we went to painkillers thinking that was the better way out, our anti-drug. And, and then uh, it turned out to be one of the worst ones that we actually ran into. And anyway, we was wanting to, we was getting into Bible studies and back into the church and we wanted to, uh, just to be better witnesses for the Lord. It was, he was convicting us and we was living a double life, you know, and um, we was pleading to the Lord because we kept trying to do it ourselves and we kept falling on our face. And yes. We couldn't get out, you yeah. know, and we prayed to the Lord and was pleading to him, Lord, please, you know, you're going to have to help us out because we can't get out. And then here come Dr. Paul and Dr. Marlow to the naps to our church, you know, and, uh, and don't even see how they would be there otherwise, yeah. if, you know. It's, um, well, we can explain that. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So one morning my dear wife woke up and said, she, she, do I know Gilbert Town? And I never heard of Gilbert Town before. So I said, go back to sleep, baby. It's, you're dreaming. <laughs> so she, another night again, she woke up again and said, Gilbert Town is in my mind. So I took her down to find, find out it was a place called Gilbert Town. And we went there and then they sent us to Jackson, where these folks were. We didn't meet them at that time. But we did a health fair in Jackson the following month. And big health fair. We have a big mobile unit. We go around doing health fairs. We pulled up there, and three persons show up for the health fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was the carpenters. Praise were there. God. And so we offered the invitation for them to come to our wellness center. And they could explain what happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and um, whenever he offered us the invitation, he, they, I don't think they knew it, but we had already been looking at the brochure for the wellness program and uh, the 10 day session. And I was talking to my husband and I was like, look, you know, maybe this would be something that could help us, you know. And then literally it seemed like a few minutes later, they were telling us to come, you know, and let us clean you up a little bit. And I'm like, how do they know, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, we went and uh, went for the weekend, and then we were just, it was such a blessing. You know, God literally sent a whole health fair to Jackson. 
just or me you. and my family yes. yes so it's very overwhelming whenever you think about it and um now here we are today and I would never think that just over a year ago where we were then and where we are now and it shows me how much God loves each individual person you know and and what he does for us because we have been crying for help for years and basically had just thought this is just how we have to live our life you know and the Lord heard our cry and he said no you don't mm -hmm. you know yes. so it's now peaceful. we're here today and clean and sober and I'm so thankful praise mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. you know I think what John Paul what you said so many people try to make a change and maybe you're listening today and you're thinking oh, I know I need to change my lifestyle I need to change what I'm doing I need to drop this habit or this addiction you can never do it by yourself mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a matter of you've got to get to that point where you yield control to mm -hmm. God we call it surrendering mm -hmm. but it, it simply means that you're yielding control to God and ask to be filled with His Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's when the power comes, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. But how wonderful God was mm -hmm. to send someone to you to help show you the way because we are, I, I'll put it this way, I was totally ignorant of the health message until I came into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. um, I was a good old Southern cook and didn't, never had any problems with it, so I didn't realize what I was doing to myself. Mm -hmm. But if you are in an addictive lifestyle, you have no idea how important, now, John Paul and Carly, you can testi testify to this, how important lifestyle, eating right, getting sunshine, getting plenty of mm -hmm. water and, and getting good nutrients, good dense nutrients, mm -hmm. it makes a complete difference because as your body begins to, God, God created our bodies to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. It's so amazing. And eating right is the number one way and getting plenty of mm -hmm. water is the number one way that you <laughs> start getting healthy and then you can start making some of those changes mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. So you had another, uh, I think you said you had another video that yes, you wanted to share? Yes, yes. Uh, this video is transitioned to talking about healing and the simple properties that God used for healing. And so we were in Madagascar not too long ago and the doctor was with us. I wish you could introduce this video. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, this um, video is special. Now where is Madagascar mm -hmm. for those who don't know? Okay, it's a, a small island. To big island. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a big island to the east of Africa, mm -hmm. the continent of Africa. And um, when we go on missions, NAPS goes to places where usually nobody else likes to go, uncharted territory. So we like to figure out where there is no church and that's where we like to go. Praise. And so God sent us there. And not only was there not a church where we went in Madagascar, a village called Ferrara, but um, the enemy was very prevalent in that village. A lot of witch doctors, voodoo, um, and it was a blessing to me because that was my first mission as a medical doctor overseas. And um, as we are able to help people to feel better, we say, well, we need to praise and thank God, who is the great physician who made you feel better. And they looked at us and said, God, who is God? So for the first time, I'm just dumbfounded because I'm thinking everybody knows who God is. And then I say, well, you know, who made the sun and the sky and the trees? And they said, I don't know. So I'm like, man, this is really starting from scratch. And so we tried to explain to them about this great God, the creator, who created the heavens and the earth for us and created them and loves them so much that he would allow them to be healed. And um, they loved it. They were hungering and thirsting for it. They wanted to know more. So we would get up early in the mornings and do Bible studies. And in some of these homes, there would be 25 people in there in the Bible study. Wow. And so God performed miracles in the healing process. And you'll see them here 
All in right. the video. Before we roll this video, I just wanted to say, because I know we're going to swap out some guests here, just wanted to thank you, John Paul and Carly and John Michael, for being with us today because your testimony is powerful. Mm -hmm. And by sharing your testimony, having the courage to stand up and say, look what God did for me, mm -hmm. you will give hope to many people. So we want to thank you mm -hmm. for being here. And the other thing I wanted to say is, when you're talking about witch doctors and witchcraft and voodoo, let me tell you something. We live in a developed country where we kind of poo-poo the idea mm. of demonic activity. Mm. We, don't, it, it, we don't see it practiced here a lot. It is practiced in areas of the United States. But it's happening more and more. You're beginning to see more and more spiritualism creeping in here to the United States. But I remember when I was speaking at the Sedaven uh, camp meeting in South Africa, I asked the conference president, the people there, I said, how do you all think about, how seriously do you take demonic possession? They looked around at each other. Mm -hmm. Then they looked at me and they said, we'll tell you how seriously we take it. If we get a call, we fast and pray for three days before we go out mm -hmm. to answer that call. So it is not only a lack of knowledge of God that you're talking about in Madagascar, but what you're talking about is true satanic activity and influence through these various other animistic type mm -hmm. uh, religions. So let's roll that now. Last week, and she's complaining of her leg constantly itching for four years. And she was itching and itching it. And when she came, it was raw, it was open. There was all kind of mucus and bacteria. So we did hydrotherapy treatments with the contrast bath. And then we wrapped it in a charcoal poultice. And we did two or three treatments. And after that, we prayed. And her leg is healed. And she said it no longer itches. And so we've been giving all the honor and praise and glory to God. And when she praises the Lord, because she knows that God has healed her leg. And she said she loves him very much. And she's my friend. <laughs> And I love her. Tikwena. <laughs> so we pray for her soul to be in heaven. Testimony was a little willing. The long distance, the two day travel to try to seek medical attention here. So what's going to happen? Where are you going to be? Well, tomorrow I already promised that I would go across the river to the villages over on the hills because they are wanting medical care too. So we were going to travel there. One mother we saw brought her child to see me and the witch doctor had placed all these charms and stuff on the child and we asked her why and she said I was desperate. My child was sick. I had nowhere else to go. So they go to the witch doctor and then there you have their souls being so out to the devil. It's very hard because I'm the only physician and a lot of these people need help and they travel days to get here. I can't see them all by myself. So we need more physicians to come out here to help so that I don't have to keep turning people away. Thank you. physicians to come. It's not just to heal the physical, but the spiritual. Because we want the voice of the children <coughs> softly clean <coughs> for silence in the shadow. Angry guns preach a gospel full of hate. 
So you can see how important the medical missionary work is, and it's amazing to think that people live in those conditions, but as they said, that was in Madagascar, but the conditions can be even worse in the southern area of the United States. Well, we have done a total swap of guests. Now, I'm just the host, so no one told me we were doing this. <laughs> but let me introduce to you again some familiar faces, I am sure. We have Darla and Tori Price. Tori, you all have been married how long? Eleven years. Eleven years. Wonderful years. Yeah, <laughs> praise God. And Darla, we, we are so used to you. You've been with NAP since 2000, and you're usually the one, the cheerleader that is leading all these <laughs> wonderful testimonies as you share reports at yes. camp meeting. Yes. Um, I am so, I remember I was just talking to you about how I joined NAPS, and for me, I was looking for purpose. And I remember I've been at Venice since I was a young child and reading the Bible and wondering, is this real? When I joined NAPS, I realized that this was just a, a shortened version of all that God wants to do. The Amen. miracles come to life. The Bible is real. And so we'll be sharing testimony. Oh, praise God. I wish we had time to share everybody's testimony because <laughs> they've got some great ones. And then we have Christine Ned and Kristen, it's Kristen, excuse me. What do you do? Uh, how are you associated with NAPS? Well, I'm associated with NAPS. I'm actually the principal at the school, NAPS Abundant Life Academy, or we call it NALA for short. Yes, and um, I mean, it's such a blessing being able to work with these children and um, do education the way that God has commissioned to us through um, his prophet, Ellen White. So Amen. God is truly blessing, and I can't wait to share even more testimonies about it Amen. as well. <laughs> and then we have absolutely the star of the show today is Jade <laughs> Burrell. She's eight years old. And Jade, you are a student at NALA. What grade are you in? Third. In the third grade. And I understand that God's got his hand on your life to do wonderful things. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Phil, you are precious. And then finally, we have Madeline Gustav. <laughs> Madeline, what do you do with NAPS? I am part of a team called YOD, which stands for the Year of Dedication. Um, this is the 14th one, so it's called the year YOD 14. So Year of Dedication, explain that. So um, basically it's comprised of a group of college students, graduates, really anyone who's willing to dedicate a year of their life to service. So, so. so the those like you, Marlene, that are in the Year of Dedication program, they might be in the middle of their their studies and just decide I'm going to take a year off and dedicate it to God or they may have graduated. Mm -hmm. So I, I just always love to hear those stories. Yeah. But let's get back to you. Tell us about your impact missions. Okay, this is an important topic for me because our city impact missions do just that. They make a amazing impact. Every single time we can travel, we do. So a lot of our volunteers are students. And so they're, whenever they have a break, Thanksgiving break, spring break, even Christmas and New Year's, they'll sacrifice the entire holiday. But it's really no sacrifice because when we get on these to different cities, it may be Dallas or Nashville or, you know, all over Los Angeles, when we get to these cities, it's nonstop going and taking, really like walking the steps of Christ. Like, um, so we'll do, we'll do church presentations, encouraging the young people, literature evangelism, we're passing out great controversies, steps to Christ. It's, it, it's a life changer. And there's actually been times where there was this one lady and she was about to, she told us she was about to take the life, her own life, and her child's life because she was discouraged. She had found out the child had lupus. She had just lost her job. And she said, Lord, if you do not give me a sign that, or, or some form of peace, then I am going to give up. And I'm going to, tonight, I will take my life and the child's. And 
Then here we come with our marching band, because uh, we, we do literature evangelism a little different with a marching band, and we gave her the book, Peace Above the Storm. Praise. And when she saw that book, she said, you are the sign, you are the sign. And then she told us the story, you just never know really Absolutely. how many lives you're saving. Amen and amen. Yeah. So have any of you been out on the impact missions? I know you have, Tori. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. What? Yeah. Them. yeah. How did it impact you? Well, you know, one thing I've grown to realize right now, there's a, a huge epidemic in our Adventist church of young people leaving. And just as Darla said, I have a similar experience where this ministry has truly shown me my purpose. It adds a whole new element to what your relationship with God is. You actually see him active in the mission field. Mm -hmm. And um, there was one time I went out doing literature evangelism and we were downtown. And I remember at that moment, I did not feel like it, which sometimes that happens even in our walk with God. Sometimes you're not going to feel Absolutely. like it. Absolutely. But it teaches you endurance, perseverance, how to push through. And I got down to the very last person I was about to canvas. And I approached her, I said, ma'am, I have to go because everybody was loading in to the van. I said, I have to go, but God told me, give you this book. And she took it, she said, wait, who are you? She's crying at this point. And I said, let me pray with you. And as I began to pray with her, you know, I'm just praying and then I run, leave, forget about the whole moment. Until later on that week, you know, Darla actually answered the phone at the NAPS office and this woman left a voicemail. I need to find this girl. She gave me this book. She doesn't know what I was going through. I need to find this girl. And I remember um, somehow we ended up getting connected again. And um, when she contacted me, she told me the whole story behind that one encounter. She said that same day, her brother fell from a 45-foot story oh. building. Mm. He was a construction worker, oh. and she just lost her job the moment she was walking downtown. Mm. And for God to send a young person with a band downtown mm. and gave her this hope, this encouragement, mm. she said it had to be God. And even a couple years later, two years later, for some reason she popped in my mind, go my cell phone, I call her, and at that moment, I called her. She said, you don't know. Why does God keep bringing you in my life mm -hmm. at the time I need it? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a wake-up call that God was giving her every single Amen. time. Um, we contacted her. And I mean, what a blessing because truly, as a young person, when you're in the church and you're sitting there, you're listening to the service, but you're not applying what you're learning, Yes. it's almost like you lose the essence of what is the purpose of me really being here? Why am I listening to this? Why am I reading the same book? But when you get to apply it and see the impact Amen. and the change that it makes in people's lives, I mean, it will transform you and others around you as well. You know, Kristen, two things you said. Number one is that you said she came to your mind yes. and you acted on it. Yes. I believe that we all need to be much more sensitive. That was the Holy Spirit yes, leading you. I and it. it was a divine appointment. Yes. She needed to hear from you right then, mm -hmm. but you acted on it rather than waiting. And you might have missed a, a great opportunity That's had you waited. Mm -hmm. But the other thing you said was purpose. Yeah. And I know that for myself, I thank God every day that I get to get up and live a life of purpose. Mm -hmm. And when our, our young people are leaving, in part, I remember asking a young person once, how can we keep the young people in the church? And you know what she said without blinking, get them involved. Yes. And there is nothing greater than getting involved in a, if you've got a child who is going a little off the track, get them involved in a missionary work. If they go on a mission trip, I guarantee you that's life changing. Yes. And, and that us, actually, because our impact missions are preparation. When we go on impact missions, we don't stay in hotels. We're not um, <laughs> in these nice places, but it's preparation. So when it's time for the international missions, we're ready. And um, Tori, I was wondering if you could share just a little bit about how we choose our location and how we get there. Okay. Well, our, our 
international missions are so powerful just because it gives you a greater understanding of how God loves to work. Uh, when we go on these trips, it's not where we're taking the nice fancy coach bus, but you'll see us as we're going down rivers and canoes, going to reach people with the gospel. And that's what I love most is when people make that Macedonian call and they say, you know, we need to hear the gospel here, come bring mm -hmm. the gospel. And then they see an army of youth coming in. It's just so powerful. Uh, for example, in Guyana, when we were there, as we go on these missions, we're going working with the people. We don't just go to do the work and then leave. What we love to do is we'll go to the main city, gather a group of young people and say, hey, we're going out come with us. And so they'll join up with us on these mission trips so that way when we come back, they're able to continue the work. And this is not in nice city areas. Yeah. As you can see, we've gone out to rural islands and other locations where people are not easily receiving the gospel. They may not have contact with many people. And so that's why we love going on these missions. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I have one quick question. Mm -hmm. Troy, did you join NAPS before you married Darla? <laughs> yes. or, and is that how y'all met? Or did you join NAPS because you met Darla? And her, <laughs> well, her passion brought you in. Well, there's a song that says it pays to serve Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And so we both uh, were already in the ministry and then that's where we met. And Praise the mm -hmm. Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, Madeline, we want to hear from you. You've, uh, as a year of dedication student, tell us about some of the mission trips or what's really you want to share today. Well, I must say I've really enjoyed this YLD so far. Um, it wasn't What made easy. you decide to do that? What is your major, what is your studies and what made you decide to do a year of dedication? Yes, so I am a pre-physical therapy major. Okay. I just completed my sophomore year of college. And um, during that year, um, I, would, I guess I could say I was going through a very trying time. And I just remember like really pleading with God, asking him to just show himself to me and to help me to get mm -hmm. to know him more. And um, of course I was able to draw closer to him as a result. And I just remember towards the end of the year, um, knowing that he was calling me to YOD. Um, and it was scary because to have to tell my parents that it's not easy. You know, my parents sent me to college to get an education, especially because I was very far from home. I'm actually from Florida, and so I go to school in Alabama. And um, I just remember um, the, during the summer, I actually was preparing to go to Ethiopia, but prior to that, I went home and I remember the entire time I was there, like really praying, like, God, give me the words to say to my parents because it's pretty difficult to explain. And I remember I spoke to my parents and my dad was not having it. He was just completely <laughs> done. And um, I remember afterwards he stormed off and my mom, she was just sitting on the couch and she was like, you know, it's crazy that you mentioned um, taking a year off of school to do mission work because she had just had a conversation with someone else that day. And I was with her during the day. I didn't realize that she was speaking to that woman, but the woman told her about her grandson who was doing um, a similar thing where he took a year off to do mission work. And she told me, you know, if God is calling you to this, you need to go. And so that was confirmation for me, like helping me to move forward knowing that God was really, um, bringing me to this work. And as a result, I've been able to not only travel and do different impact missions like we usually do, but also to help out the Wellness Center, um, be able to help out with um, sessions, health sessions that we have where guests are able to come and receive you know, holistic treatment and be able to just not only receive that physical healing, but the spiritual healing that comes with that. I mean, have you been on an international mission yet? I have. I just went on my first international mission to Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and that was a blessing in itself because, as you know, when you're going to do God's work, you know, the devil tries to discourage you in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I really appreciated about being able to go to Ethiopia was that, as um, Tori mentioned, one of the things that NAPS does when we go to different countries is not just to, you know, 
teach people about um, Christ it's and health and all that, um, but to also make disciples. So we go and we train youth there to do what we've been doing and to continue the work in that country once we leave. And so I remember meeting all the different trainees that we had. They were so excited to be able to work for the Lord. And um, a lot of them were, grew up in the church as well and weren't really kind of following God. And so um, after they were able to work with us, they had that fire, that fire that we all had when we joined NAPS. And as a result, now they're doing so many different missions in Ethiopia. I know they were raising funds themselves to be able to just go and do missions in Ethiopia. And so it's been such a huge blessing that mission was great. Yeah. You know, I actually heard you, Darla, I believe it was at an ASI before. I, I just joined the church. I'd not, I wasn't working oh. at 3ABN yet. And um, um, I'd only been in the church, I think, a month when I heard you. And that's one thing. Anytime you hear any of the NAPS students, mm -hmm. any of your members, when you're talking, the passion, mm -hmm. the enthusiasm mm -hmm. that they, they, it just emanates from them. And it's because when you're in this type of work, mm -hmm. no matter what level you came in, no matter what your spiritual condition, whatever you thought it was, God, you are learning to rely on God. You're learning to be led by God. You're learning to uh, be like Jesus, which is to do, you know, he said, I only say what the Father tells me to say, and I only do what the Father tells me to do. How many international mission trips could you even begin to count them? Wow, I, I know we've, NAPS as a whole has been to 13 countries. Um, we've been to 13 countries, but the crazy thing is wherever we go, they start up their own, we start up branches. We work with them the first three weeks. We're training them, everything we do, they're getting it. And then the last three weeks, they lead so that when we leave, they can continue. The Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. So it's so important that they become disciples too, because we won't always be able to go, but God is calling us as laborers to arise, go, make a difference. You never know the lives you could save. Amen. And the law of life demands reproduction, Amen. even in the spiritual realm. That's why it is so important that we fulfill the great gospel commission. I know that some of you at home may be watching and thinking, this is really exciting. I'd like to be a part of it. Or maybe they'd like, you'd like to uh, contact Matt Knapps about doing something with them or having them come and do something in your area. We want to put up their address and contact information. This is how you may get in touch. And you may be impressed by the Holy Spirit that you want to support this organization. Here's how you can do that. To find out more about NAPS missions, the NAPS Abundant Life Academy, or their Abundant Life Wellness Institute. Be sure to visit their website, napsoc.org. There you will find a wealth of information, including how you can support their efforts in disaster relief, city impact, and international missions. That website again is napsoc.org. You may also call them at 256-262-7712 or write to NAPS, Post Office Box 11970, Huntsville, Alabama, 35814. This hour has just flown by, and we could talk about so much more. But, Darla, tell me, how many volunteers do you have with NAPS now? Well, NAPS has over a thousand volunteers globally. But here in the U.S., we need laborers, we need nurses, we need teachers, we need students that are willing to just serve the Lord and see what God has in store. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, and as a final thought, one thing that I, I really see that resonates is purpose. I don't know if you heard that over Absolutely. and over again. Finding purpose and truly naps and mission work in general is something I believe that the Lord has put in our Christian walk to serve other people, that, is, that helps us to find the, the real 
origin of why God created us. Amen. He wants us to be relational because he's relational. He Amen. loves us and he wants us to share that now with others. And I really praise God that now we're instilling the same purpose, the same value at to children that are even younger than us. Yes. <laughs> and I, I really praise God for, you know, the school, Nala. And I mean, there's a ton of things that they're learning. They're learning the purpose and the value that God has created them for now at this young age. And Jade, tell them what you've been learning at school and things that you like. Well, what we have learned at school is bread making, agriculture, art, music, science, social studies, math, Bible. Yeah. And you like it all, I'll bet. Oh, yes, you she does. can do it all. <laughs> oh, well, Jade, we are very thankful that you are here today, and thank, thanks to each and every one of you. And oh, contact them, get involved. Get involved in some kind of missionary work because God will change your life for the better. Mm -hmm. Well, our prayer is that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you always. Bye bye.